After traveling the interstates of Tennessee, I headed west to the mountains. Or more accurately, right through the mountains. On the other side was a different world. It is a hot, sunny, and beautiful day in West Virginia. And it's probably one of the last warm, hot days I'm gonna see, especially in the wilderness, because it's the end of March, I'm gonna head back north to Canada, and I already know from the weather forecast, it's not gonna get any nicer. So I wanted one more time out in the woods where I could enjoy the wilderness and just chill out. And this is the place I picked. It's the New River Gorge, and apparently the gorge is not that new, but the National Park is. Uh, locations a little off the beaten trail, but you know West Virginia doesn't have a lot of doesn't have a huge population anyway. So I think most places in West Virginia are, are off the beaten trail. Um, I'm about I'd say about two hours. I was last in Bristol, Tennessee. Took the I-81. Uh, northeast and uh, decide to get right off the interstate and come up into the hills and there's lots of hills you can see in the background there are a lot of big hills and a lot of winding roads which I don't appreciate but with big hills you also got a lot of rivers waterfalls uh, right now in March it's still a little gray most of the trees uh, haven't uh, you know the leaves aren't on the trees yet but I still think there's enough that I can appreciate in a very short stay. I'm at a free campsite called the Army Camp. Uh, what is it near? <laughs> well, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. The nearest town was Beckley, and I was camped around here. There's about 12 sites pads like this one and each pad is actually pretty good it's it's well spaced you get a grill you get a fire pit you get a picnic table and you get a reasonable amount of woods in the background as well there is one pit toilet there are no hookups and there are no water unless you want to use the river water which of course I did but I'm excited about this I'm gonna make the best of it hope I can find something interesting the army camp is right beside the New River, and although I didn't actually drink the water, I did use it for my shower. Well, along with the tiny little seashells, there's another thing you'll find on the beach. Black rocks! Look familiar? It's coal. This is West Virginia. After seeing the white sands of the U.S. coast, finding black pebbles on a beach here just confirms this area is as different in geology as it is in geography. There's no denying that coal has played a big role in the state's economy and history, and many communities' livelihoods still depend on it. However, this video will concentrate on other attractions, like tunnels, trains, rivers, bridges, and even a folk hero. But let's start with the bridges. From the highway, 
the drive over the New River Gorge Bridge doesn't seem that awe-inspiring, even though it's billed as the Western Hemisphere's longest arch bridge. But when viewed near the visitor center, you get a much better perspective on how massive it is. A short stroll down an easy pathway reveals the huge expanse of the New Valley Gorge itself and why the bridge was needed in the first place. Wherever you go in this area, a train is never far away as many of the roads follow the tracks. This one leads to a ghost town, a community once prosperous that's hidden between the hills and the New River. The empty train station welcomes you to Thurman, West Virginia, a relic of an era when railroads meant prosperity. The railway bridge still stands above the river, which is now home to several ducks. But those echoes of an era still resonate in these tracks. And although this ghost town may have ghosts, it also has five living souls who make sure that trains keep running. The ghosts look on in amusement. With a parting scream of brakes as it rounds a corner, the train disappears and the town returns to silence. Only to be interrupted again by a passenger train. It seems ghosts don't get much sleep around here. In the southern part of the park, the new river widens. Sandstone Falls tumbles over the rocks at a width of 1,500 feet. A spectacular sight to view from the overlook. The southern tip of the preserve ends at Hinton, a bright little town of about 2,500 people. Lots of museums and shops there, and a good spot to grab lunch, which is what I did. But my last destination was outside the park near the little village of Talcott. Folklore has it that an extraordinary event took place here many years ago, and it involved this giant of a man. He was strong, tough, and stubborn. His destiny was determined by the 10-pound sledgehammer in his hand. His name was John Henry, and he was forever known as the Steel Driving Man. The legend begins in 1870 with the construction of the Great Bend Tunnel for the C&O Railroad. 
It was backbreaking work for the poor men who built it, including many African Americans. Whether John Henry was a freed slave or a prisoner has never been proven, but in all accounts he took pride in his abilities. The story of John Henry is legendary, and it's one of those great examples of man versus machine. I mean, he used to drive spikes into the rock so they could put dynamite in. And then one day, a machine came up to take his job. And with his livelihood threatened, a contest ensued between the steam-powered drilling machine and John Henry. Through brute strength and sheer determination, John Henry won, but died soon after, a hammer in his hand. The tunnel was completed, but at a great cost to both the railroad and the men who gave their lives for it. But the name John Henry lives on, in both story and in song. As a musician's standard, the Ballad of John Henry has been a classic folk song for over a hundred years, and has been sung by hundreds of musicians, including Johnny Cash, Bruce Springsteen, Woody Guthrie, and Lead Belly. I wish I could play you at least one of these versions, but copyright prevents me from doing so. But I had to include something. Y you might want to hit mute. And John Henry, he said to the captain, a man ain't nothing but a man. But before I let that steam drill beat me down, I'll die with a hammer in my hand, Lord, Lord. I'll die with a hammer in my hand. It's a powerful song. I wish I had the voice for it. But it's a phenomenal story. And I think it's real. The statue, by the way, was made by a local artist, Ross Evans, once a CNO railroader himself. Down the side of the tunnel was a little spring. It kind of gave me a subtle reminder of something I'd probably have to face in the next few days ahead. Sun's gone down. It's my last night in a campsite before I head north. I won't be seeing a lot more wilderness. I'll be seeing mostly highways and rest stops at this point in time. So uh, one last night in the wilderness. And because I know it's going to start raining in the morning, I packed everything up. So in the morning, just get out, turn the key, and off I go. It's been an experience the last few months. Uh, new territory for me, the East definitely has a lot of possibilities. And yes, there are free campsites in the East, they're not all in the West. So, uh, you know, that myth is busted. This is a free campsite and there are many more. It is a challenge to find places like this for sure. And it's not just because it's the East, it's just because there's a lot of people that want to camp. And although I camped off season, uh, certainly when things get a little warmer, these places will be busy. But I've made a lot of notes. I do want to come back here when things are a little greener, a little warmer, and uh, yeah, there's so many places I want to hike. It's my first time in the Appalachians, or Appal Appalachians, whatever you want to call it. I'm definitely going to be back, but for me, uh, this trip is pretty well concluded. What have I learned? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. There are certainly some travel lessons and some life lessons and, uh, and a few bugs right now as well. But I'm just glad I can still travel. I've got a few more priorities up north that I've got to attend to. You know, I, I'm hoping my cabin's okay. I don't know. Haven't seen it for a few months, so I'm hoping it's going to be good. And uh, I got a bit. I got a little bit of building to do. Got a few repairs to do. Uh, and I got a few more videos to work on that I haven't released. But this is my last night. A um, couple more nights before I officially close this trip. But I just won't be camping anymore. 
and it's camping that I love the most. I wish I could do this all year round, but I've got to do it a few months at a time and then take a break. I love the West and I love the East and I love the South, but now it's time to head North because I love the North as well. And uh, I'm excited because when I get there, the snow is going to be melting and those little hints of spring are going to happen there as well. I'm hitting the hay. It was a great night to end the camping part of this journey. With the faint sound of crickets and the soothing sounds of a river. In the morning, I left at first light, getting a head start on the long road ahead. And yes, I did put the window cover down. The rain did arrive right on schedule and continued to pour most of the day. Well, it wouldn't be a trip back without at least one accident and gridlock. Hope the guy's okay. Ooh, it's bad, it's a trucker. He's over on his side. Truckers have it pretty bad out here. You'll probably notice my tires are a little loud right now, especially when I take a left turn. I'm actually taking a right turn right now, but in a little while they get louder. It's not the tires, I'm pretty sure it's the wheel bearings. I wore them out this trip. I did replace one, but uh, it looks like it's the right side that's gone now. Should be able to make it back, but it's just another one of those repairs and fix ups I have to do when I get back to Canada. And there's a lot of repairs breakdowns. I'm probably going to do a video of just the things that had to be repaired, replaced, or tweaked for the next trip. Well, I made it to Pennsylvania. I'm just east of Scranton at a rest stop. And I think that's about as far as I could go. There is a section here for RVs and trailers but the trucks took them all, so I'm in the spot for the cars. Hopefully nobody's going to mind. There's a few spots there still for cars, so <laughs> you got to make the best of it. I don't want to go further. It's getting dark, and there's too many trucks on the highway right now. On the last day, I made it through Maine just as the darkness fell. There were little patches of snow still on the ground, but in the air, it continued to rain. But once in Canada, the snow fell. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please check out my other videos as well.